what we have over here, the brand new BMW F900R and the Honda CB650R. Both bikes are in our long-term test fleet and today we took them out for a ride. And we started with the best part, the twisties. Man, it's incredible! I'm on the BMW F900R right now and it's absolutely amazing and nimble. It's one of the best street bikes I ever tried. I don't know what they did over here, but it has nothing to do with the old F800R or with, I don't know, with another bike. It's something completely new and completely different and it feels even better than the BMW F900XR. Basically, they are the same bikes. The position is different, everything is different on that bike and uh, it feels quite good, I love it also. I'm riding the Honda CB650R. It's a whole different feeling over here. Different engine, different approach, turning angle, it's uh, a bit wider, so it feels quite good and twisty. But the suspension, it's pretty, pretty rough and we are on a bumpy road right now and I kind of lack the control of the front end so I'm struggling a bit but uh, I'll be at least behind you or in front of you This is the CB650R, a Honda Classic inline 4 engine, a naked bike. Now it was updated with this headlight and with this Neo uh, retro Neo theme. Neo sports theme, yeah. And over there is the BMW F900R. It does a very good job, the position and the engine response and the way you feel on it, it's just pushing you to the limit. And How many horsepower? 100 five or something like that uh, yeah exactly uh, close to 105 it's not much but it feels good because this engine this twin cylinder engine offers a lot of mid-range compared to the inline four from the honda it's a lot more powerful and it feels like pushing all over the revolution uh, area because it's a lot of mid-range over yeah, there it's a you lot can of see you can see that this is a new engine is uh, a new design, a new technology. Uh, it's it's a new it's a new manner to make an engine, unlike Honda, which has this engine from the old CBR. Yeah, and, uh, it's a sports bike engine. It's yeah, detuned exactly. And uh, yeah, it still comes with the same vibrations as the sport bike. Uh, but it's nice because I I used to own one of those bikes and uh, I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, because because this engine. Uh, from the Honda is very smooth, you just rev it up and you have that whole RPM range to go from 0 to, I don't know, 10,000 RPM. And uh, So compared to the previous models, it has a lot more mid-range right now and yeah. it, feels, it feels quite powerful. For me and I think for you also, we kind of felt the need for some more juice over there. It will be nice to have at least the same power output as the BMW F900R. And uh, the main thing that I've spotted, the position is pretty relaxed and you can go along for 400 kilometers like us today. So this makes, this makes a great all-rounder out of this bike. The position, the riding position on the BMW of 900R is, uh, on the other hand... A bit more sportier, I think, because you, you stand with your knees crutched a lot more than... Yeah, it's on the more Honda. compact or maybe it needs a higher seat. Who knows maybe it could fix the problem but even i i felt the need for more for more space uh, yeah if you say that imagine what i went to yeah, because so it's, uh, yeah I'm but uh, yeah from from the seat upwards it's okay the the handlebar everything is okay but uh, the leg area is a bit cramped so on the twisties both bikes are amazing but i can tell you for sure that my favorite is the bmw f900r it feels more agile compared to the Honda. 
Yeah, although it has a different steering angle, so this one steers just a, a bit uh, less than the Honda. The, the Honda feels good. It's a, it's a steady bike, it's very reliable. You can, uh, you can go fast through twisties. With the BMW, it's easier for a novice rider to do it, I think. Yes. And uh, it's a bit more fun for an experienced rider. Now the suspension, because we noticed some difference over there too. The Honda feels... A bit more, stiffer. Yeah, it a feels bit a bit sportier. stiffer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they are both on the sporty side, but the Honda is uh, just a bit more stiff. Uh, the front suspension is not adjustable for both bikes, so you cannot do nothing over there. On the rear you have uh, adjustments for the Honda preload and uh, something, but on this one you have the dynamic suspension which is... If you got the money, yeah. <laughs> if you it's got the money to pay, because in the basic stream you don't have the dynamic suspension, but still, yeah, it's, uh, it's adjustable only on rear. The gearbox. The BMW gearbox feels pretty good. <laughs> pretty good, yeah. yeah it's a surprise because usually it went like clank. Yeah. When shifting up and shifting down, but still it's not as refined as the, as the one on the Honda. The one on the Honda feels like a magic carpet because it changes gears very fast and uh, very smooth. The clutch is lightweight to pull. On the other hand, the BMW has some points when you need to, to be uh, with a steady foot and press it very hard in order to get yeah. But it, gearbox, it's, right? some, it's something usual for the BMW bikes, so I think it wouldn't bother the, 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 those who are, um, who are used to it. And uh, the new guys coming from Japanese bikes maybe will be a bit, uh, a bit disappointed about the gearbox, but still it works fine. And I think it's a huge improvement compared to, to the other. The previous oh, model, yeah. yes. And uh, also, uh, you have a quick shifter with auto blipper? Yeah, on this one, on the BMW, you have a quick shifter with auto blipper on the Honda, you can only add up a quick shifter. Yeah, it, it, it costs uh, 250 euros, so... It's not that much, but uh, unfortunately we don't have that system on the, Yet. the bike. Yeah. yeah, because we're gonna put it yeah, soon. It's, both bikes are our long-term test bikes and we are starting to improve them and starting to clean them. We take great care yeah, of so them. Yeah, so the Honda here. definitely needs a quick shifter because yeah, it, it will shifts enhance. so, so good. And yeah, it will enhance the experience a lot. It will be criminal, yeah. It's windy with a naked bike, yeah, you know that. Over already. 120 kilometers yeah, per hour. What I like to do on a naked is uh, put my, uh, one of my hands underneath my chest and sit on my hand on the gas tank. It's yeah, easier like to, it's broken. Yeah, it's easier to go to the, to the highway and it feels more protected. And it's when I, when I went, went back uh, on the Honda, I felt like a need for the cruise control because I got used to it and sitting like this, on the highway for an hour is not too fun. Uh, wind protection. Wind protection. The, first thing. Uh, the BMW. We is can a... only speak about the near rear. Yeah, yeah, the near rear. Have any fairings? Yeah, the BMW is a bit better because it has. Uh, yeah, it's wider in the front area. These fairings are a yeah, bit the, wider. Yeah, there are some side panels over there or something like that, and uh, yeah, it's plastic. I think. You have side panels on both, but these yeah, are this wider, is... and it, it will offer a bit more wind protection while going on the highway. So this is very good. You yeah, had we, had some, we had some rain at some point and uh, what I've noticed because I was the first to jump out on the bike after the rain finished, uh, my, my back and my, uh, my jeans were wet instantaneously because the, the bikes, both, both of them are throwing a lot of, of, of the water, water from the asphalt on the saddle or on your back. On the BMW it's a bit more water on the saddle, <laughs> on the Honda it's, uh, the protection it's a bit better because it won't go that high on your back.
what do you think for the city? Which one do you like the most? I think they are pretty much the same. I like that the Panda feels a bit more nimble than this one. I don't know why. Mm. Maybe it's shorter and maybe the angle it's a bit wider. Mm -hmm. But it's a small difference, very small difference. So green light! So I was telling you about the steering angle on the Honda, which is a bit wider and it will help you a lot in between cars, so you can do U-turns yes, faster very important. and easier. Yeah, and uh, the handlebar seems to be a bit narrower on the Honda and a bit lower and the bike seems to be slimmer, as you said. And you, you, might, you might have a greater chance to go through the traffic a bit faster and be the first at the stoplights. Yeah, but both bikes, let's be honest, both, both, both bikes yeah, are doing just this fine. One, this one requires a bit more experience in the traffic because right. you, can, you can be the first, but you have to switch it from one leg to another very yeah, fast. Yeah, because of the mirrors. Yeah, because of the mirrors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a small advantage for the Honda on this side. Okay. Which one do you think is cooler? So Which one has practical. the looks? The looks for me will go to the Honda because I like this headlight and I like the, the way I saw it in the mirrors yeah. today. Yeah, it, has, the BMW. it has this, uh, this LED light yeah, and it has this one which are always uh, turned on. Oh, yeah. yeah, and it has this iconic uh, exhaust shape and you can tell so, that it's so a Honda. It, it looks very good. The BMW has a more slicker look, it's more modern, it's more aggressive. The next part should be what do you get for what money because it's uh, it's a topic that we need to discuss. Yeah, because uh, this bike, the Honda, is coming for uh, 8,150 euros price in Romania at least. Uh, and the BMW is a bit more expensive, it's like 600 euros more expensive in Romania. Uh, but it comes with uh, that fancy dash, with connectivity. So this is standard? Yeah, this is standard right now. And it, it has connectivity and it shows you a lot of cool stuff if you have them over there, I don't know. I, I see that uh, it comes with a steering damper. Okay, so what it else? Al uh, it also comes with ride-by-wire, which is very important because it allows you to, to get the riding mode. So you have the riding mode? In yeah, standard. but not all of them. You don't have the dynamic pro riding mode, for example. You, you, you're not going to be able to configure the traction control and everything. You have just two or something like that riding modes, like rain and road. And if you want to do more, you have to, to pay for it at BMW. So uh, I want to just check it out because the, the price for the bike in test, it's 11,100 euros. This one over here. Okay, so that's three thousand, like yeah, close to three thousand. Three thousand, yeah, euros more for the BMW. Three thousand euros more, yeah. So we kind of cheated today because we took a almost a full spec bike, <laughs> but uh, only by judging the way they they handle and the way they ride on different kind of uh, roads. Yeah, so no good is I no. I have to say they they are they are pretty close. I would oh, I would go for the for the BMW only because. I think uh, I will. I will love to have this dash, and also I would love to have the the riding modes. It's very important to be able to switch in between riding modes while riding. If I'm a novice rider, I will love to have the rain mode. Let's say. Really. It's useful. It's very useful. Oh, I would go with the BMW because it's it feels more fun to ride. To be honest. It's yeah, but if you don't have the dynamic uh, riding mode, it's not as fun. Really? Yeah. It, Do you think it's not gonna stick to the asphalt? It will, it will be It will be good, but it won't be as good as we ride it today. Uh, there's also the, uh, the electronics that are very refined because we didn't talk about the electronics. You have uh, traction control and ABS on the Honda, you have traction control and ABS on the BMW. This one, it's refined, it's close to the way it feels on my race yeah. bike. So and if you're paying some, some more money, you're gonna get the ABS Pro and things like that and another controls and more and more electronics. I, and I don't think a, a guy that's going to buy a BMW will buy the stock trim. At least one option he will let it have. Yeah, of course. So which one do you think is essential for this bike? Which option? Uh, the essential, the dynamic riding mode. Yeah. And quick shift. 
on the killer's right. Oh my god, that's the best. That's very good. Yeah, that's the best one. Man, there's something annoying about that BMW. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. When you, when you went to the gas station, it felt like putting some gas in a scooter, you know, not in the bike. Yeah, exactly, because it only handles 13 <laughs> liters. Yeah, and <laughs> so uh, it's pretty close to having a, having a 13 liters. And also the fuel consumption yeah, because is like, what, like uh, six or something like that? 6.5, yeah, I had to do. Whoa, today 6.5. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our winner for today will be the BMW because uh, it comes with a bit more things at the standard price and uh, it's a bit more fun to ride. But the difference is pretty small. So if you want to go for the Honda, I think you won't be that uh, upset because you yeah, don't And if you have so the budget? If you have the budget, you can add up some optionals and you can buy the BMW for sure.